On today's video, we will be talking about moving to Ocala, currently one of the fastest real estate markets in the country. The increase of single family home permits is the highest in the country at this moment. That means that many homes are being built here and many people are moving to this area. But what is behind this growth and is Ocala becoming a better place or not? So what is causing all this growth? From what I understand, people can't afford other parts of Florida. Rather, moving from out of state or relocating within the state, and it's nothing new, it's been going on for many years now. It's more like where they had to end up. The market has been appreciating even before the lockdowns. So while affordability was the original draw to the city, now that construction and appreciation and interest in this area is at a peak, why the crap do these people keep coming? The answer is pretty clear. They did not understand this real estate market, what is behind all the growth. I just can't personally wrap my mind around the idea of moving to a place because other people have moved there because they also couldn't afford somewhere better. That's how every crappy place in America started. As an option B, this isn't a place you dream about coming to, it's just a place you end up at. But Florida is an attractive place, and Ocala has a lot of Florida in it. Well, it's in Florida. What I mean is that Ocala has a little bit of the flavor of South Florida. You see, North Florida is really more like Georgia or Alabama. But when you get to about Tampa, Florida, everything changes. You see more palm trees. You see different styles of construction. You start to feel like you're really in Florida, not South Alabama. And in that aspect, Ocala really feels like Florida, the Florida that people moving here imagine in their head. For me, as a Florida resident who lived out of state, I don't really feel like I'm back in Florida till I get off in Ocala. You see the palm trees in the new shopping centers, and you start to feel like you're really in Florida. But there's also a little bit of North Florida mixed in there. It really has a little bit of both. And in a bad way, because it's still too cold for the tropical palm trees like the royal palms and coconuts of Miami. But then it's so far into the deep south that you got backwards people, civil war reenactments, a hostile view of outsiders in many places. You land in the wrong part of Ocala, you might get some very hostile neighbors. <music> Thank you. 
Many people moving to Ocala are coming from Southeast Florida. The lifestyle there is very expensive and they are seeking a relief from the heavy traffic and complications of city life. We were recently in Ocala and I gathered the courage to ask some of the locals who had relocated from Southeast Florida how they felt about their move. They felt very unwelcome and unwanted in this area, but they also expressed that the affordability, safety, and job opportunities far outweighed their discomforts of not being welcomed here. Those moving here still felt like they were economically improving their lifestyles by moving to this area. What I found odd is that they mentioned increased safety in Ocala. Now I spent time in Ocala and in Miami and it never occurred to me that Ocala would be safer than Miami. But this is what many of the people moving from the Miami area to Ocala considered Ocala to be much safer. Miami's violent crime rate is much higher than Ocala, but they are both above the national average. I think that in Ocala, in the same price range, you have better neighborhood options, giving those relocating from more expensive areas kind of a better opportunity to land in a better neighborhood. There was an exodus out of South Florida and many of the residents of the Ocala area originate from places like Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, Naples, or Fort Myers. Many of these people are selling in places like Bellevue or Marion Oaks. There is a large Cuban and Puerto Rican population growing within the Ocala area. And considering that many of the residents from Ocala originally came from South Florida and they left because they didn't like these people that were coming there, pretty much lets you know that they're not happy about these changes. So now you have all this influx of people moving to Ocala and a lot of these people don't like each other. Now they're all competing for housing, jobs, and while Cuban restaurants and Puerto Rican food trucks are popping out throughout the entire Ocala area, are they being welcomed to those neighborhoods? And the same thing can be said about people relocating from up north for other regions of the country. However, despite this conflict going on between the new residents, it's not like Ocala didn't already have a bunch of problems of its own. This area has a serious use and consumption problem. If you're moving here from South Florida or from New York, you have the ability to get into a better neighborhood. And I would say at least the bottom third of the real estate market, especially the older homes and neighborhoods and mobile home parks, should really be avoided by those relocating to the area and you should really seek out newer construction. Because the area of Ocala has historically been very affordable. When something's very affordable, there's usually a very serious underlying reason. In the case of Ocala, consumption and use makes living in these areas unattractive. Areas of newer homes like Marion Oaks, what we're looking at here, still have their problems as well. And don't get me wrong, there are great little areas in the Ocala area. For example, the little town of Micanopy. This little tourist trap is actually worth seeing. There are diamonds in the rough in the Ocala area. This is a town I strongly advise you enter the rental market first and have time to scope places out. This metropolitan area doesn't give you a clear cut best area, you really gotta search for it. You got natural springs, you got small historic towns, you have rural areas. There might be a perfect place for you in the Ocala area, you're just gonna need time to tune into that. I think living here for about six months before you buy will give you a real good feel for the area. This isn't a place to buy in a rush, 
I found that many of the realtors that I spoke to when I was looking at real estate in the Ocala area weren't even too interested in helping you. In other words, they're working at their own speed. And the ones that are moving at your speed, they're taking advantage of the fact that you're moving a little fast. The romantic comedy Doc Hollywood was filmed here. This is really the type of movie I personally like. I really struggle to identify with a lot of the films that are out right now. They're never going to make movies the way they used to, and it's nice that this town has that history. Also, the movies Cross Creek and The Earling were filmed in this vicinity. If you're from Florida, you need to see these movies because it'll give you a real understanding of the state's real history. The Yearling and Cross Creek are very similar. I really enjoyed the Cross Creek version a lot better. Island Grove is just to the north of Ocala. It is really like an abandoned rural town. If you like exploring interesting and weird places, there's no shortage of it in the Ocala area. And there's many historical sites and other Florida memorabilia type places that mark the interesting composition of Florida's past and as well as its future in stark contrast. It is a historical microcosm of what's happened in the state of Florida in general. I also recommend a movie out of Orlando called The Florida Project. When you watch The Florida Project, the Earling, Cross Creek, and Doc Hollywood, you will be in the infancy of understanding Florida's history and its significance to the people that are actually from here. Or you could hop straight to Kodak Black, Florida Man, and leaving your car on outside blasting music while walking to the convenience store. That's like level two right there. Level three involves real estate fraud, insurance fraud, and stealing a dump truck all in the same week. You can skip all that by ending up on the local news with a Florida Man story. And today, a lot of people are going that route. Since there's no beaches in the Ocala area, your aquatic entertainment will mostly come from the natural springs or a sinkhole. The Rainbow River, southwest of Ocala, is one of my favorite. It is situated in the town of Denellen, which is partially in Citrus County and partially in Marion County. Talking about Marion County, many people complain that they're being taxed out of their life. Overall, it's not as bad as some people put it, they're just comparing it to the adjacent rural counties where you have to burn your toilet paper because they don't pick it up. Sounds like nobody pays taxes around there, then they don't have enough money for a freaking waste management truck. So you get what you pay for, so if you're moving to Marion County, just make sure you look into taxes when you look at the price of the house as well. Nothing near Cape Coral or West Palm Beach prices though. But then again, it's all about your personal perspective. See, if you're coming from like New Jersey, you're going to think it's great. If you're coming from Millbrook, Alabama, where I used to live, they're going to be like, why would you pay for a garbage truck when you could just burn your toilet paper and smell so good? I don't even understand why you'd have a luxury like a waste management truck where you could just burn all your garbage and get cancer. Talking about rednecks, there's a lot of rednecks in the Ocala area, and some of the more rural redneck parts may not be for everybody. Some of these more redneck areas are just about as backwards as anything in Alabama, plus they have a higher drug consumption, higher crime rate, but they do jack up the whole truck, not just the front. Just kidding, they actually squat trucks here as well. Now that I think about it, pretty much it's the same crap as Alabama. Well, hold on, Jose. We don't marry our sisters around here. They gotta be at least a second cousin. Unless she's really hot, then it's understandable. And if you're an Ocala redneck right now, just, you know I'm doing you a favor by telling these people not to move to your neighborhood. I mean, that's a win-win for everybody. Jokes aside, some of these really, really rural backwoods areas in Ocala really are not for outsiders. So you need to know the difference between horse country and like meth horse country. See, in horse country, the people who work with the horses are on meth, and like in horse meth country, even the horses are cleaning the people who are on meth. Even the horses are like, man, you gotta get cleaned up, man. <laughs> and like jokes aside again, it is actually downright sad and depressing, especially the ones that are so young, they got a family. One area to definitely avoid is a place called Fort McCoy. One of the saddest things about this place is how many young people are so deep in these pits. It's almost like these colleges and universities in the area are dumping grounds for young people and they're really not living right. Some of these places are downright gorgeous. The area really has a lot of natural beauty and what makes these places affordable isn't that it's ugly, it's really that dealing with these people and their antics and their hate and their anger. For me, just seeing them with dirty hair, being so young, so much potential, and just wasting their lives away just discouraged the crap out of me from wanting to live out here. 
It's not as bad as like Toledo, Ohio, or Youngstown, Ohio, or anywhere in Ohio, really. But the city, to me, feels a little depressing compared to places like Fort Myers, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Like South Florida really has more life. Even Orlando and Tampa have a whole lot more life. That's why a lot of people call Ocala, Slow Cala. You can really find a perfect, beautiful place for you in the Ocala area. I'm just giving you a general idea so you understand if you're moving here, what type of stuff you're gonna find in some places. I know a lot of people tell me, Jose, you're being really harsh on these cities when you do these lists. And that's the purpose of these videos, to give people a real perspective on some of the things that can make them change their mind. I also go through the comments on my Ocala video, so I have an understanding of what other people who've already lived here have gone through. When it comes to historical, pretty stuff, horse country, and all the other crap you'd want to hear about in an Ocala video, there's probably like 500 videos by realtors who've already done that. But they're not going to tell you about those horses on meth down there. Stone paper scrap metal air conditioning unit. They all beat up old Ford Ranger down there. And, and you don't agree with what I'm saying? Just get in the comments and tell me what you like about Ocala the most. Planning a trip to the Ocala area soon. Hopefully before you come down to Florida to Snowbird, I'll have a lot of Ocala area content coming your way. So you're probably thinking that I don't recommend the Ocala area based on all the negative stuff I've dwelled on during this video. It's not so much that I think it's a bad area, as I've, I've really come to understand all the things that suck about this place since I personally wanted to move there myself. And I've said that about a lot of places because I really do want to find the perfect place for us. We moved around, it's been kind of crazy. Well anyways, one thing that caught me, and this was a comment from a subscriber on one of my Ocala night drive videos. I was like, why are there so many cops at these gas stations at night? One of the subscribers wrote something along the lines of, there's so much crime in Ocala that these gas stations need to be on patrol all the time to keep all the druggies out and the customers safe. If you told me you were going to move to Ocala two years ago, I would have been like, please go for it. You're going to love it. But with increasing real estate prices, the biggest draw this area had was affordability, and now that's gone. A new Ocala was going to change, but it's happening faster than I ever imagined. Really aggressive drivers in rural areas back then was the biggest drawback that I saw. But now the more time I spend here, the more bad things I see about the area. Good things as well. And because this area is changing so fast, I'm going to have to get out there again to keep you guys updated on what's going on right now. These videos are coming soon. I can't wait for it. To see the new Ocala. Thank you.